Okay, so then maybe now is a good a good point to get into self energy um, and get a sense of what that is because from there I want to get a deeper dive from you on what trauma mm -hmm. is and then how trauma relates to exiles and how all of that relates to the IFS system before I ask you a little bit um, about where this all applies in, in a normal person's life without trauma. But let's get a sense of, of, um, of what self energy is all about first. Yeah. Yeah. So self energy is the way I think about self energy is that it's a state of being. Okay. And people get confused sometimes. Self is different than parts. I believe that we are all, um, kind of this, uh, collaboration amalgam of self and parts okay self is different than parts and it has these certain qualities to it that uh you know we have the the mnemonics of the eight c's of self energy but it, you know the self energy is calm curious compassionate open loving okay self is this state of being that is within all of us um and it has inherent healing capacity Personally, I believe self-energy comes from source. You can define source in any way you want to define source. I believe it's God, love, beauty, nature, whatever, you know, whatever your definition of that is. Um, but it's this, it's this essence within all of us. We all have it and we're all born with it. Um, and that, what ends up happening, so, and I, um, I feel self-energy in three different ways, okay? Everybody's different in the way they experience it. You know, I can feel a uh, tingling movement throughout my body when I can access self-energy, and I really think I, I access the energy in my environment, um, and I could just feel that. And it is this opening, calming experience that I have when I feel that way. I also have this kind of, I don't call it a titanium core, if you will, this solid, strong, essence in me it's powerful it's strong it's not powerful in a controlling way it's power powerful in a solid way and then i i also have for me another dimension is when i access i would call it the spiritual what's beyond us all um and i when i get into that space it's like everything's okay you know we're okay you're okay it's gonna be okay and i really trust that wholeheartedly so for me, that's the way I experience self-energy. Um, and I try to help my clients access their experience of self-energy because everybody is different, as I've said. And when you get somebody in that space or state of being, the therapist kind of steps back and allows the process to unfold because you'll hear the client say stuff like, I think that little boy needs a hug right now. Or, I think he needs to yell at his father. It's like, okay, let them do that. Oh, okay. Like you trust the process when self is around, you know, and the way you help somebody access self energy is by working with their protective parts, validating their protective parts, understanding their positive intention and getting their permission to relax. And then self naturally emerges and then self accesses the wound because protective parts have given permission. Okay. So that's the, that's the, the way we go about it. Very respectful, not pushy, not controlling, not, not um, telling them what they need to do or not giving a great interpretation about what we think is going on. It's about opening the space and allowing the natural healing to unfold with the wisdom of self energy. Hmm. I'm having a mind of like a, or I'm having a vision of a, of like a symphony or something. And mm -hmm. self energy is sort of the conductor at the front, or maybe like yeah. for first chair position, or I can't, I can't remember what it is. Um, and all of a sudden there's a, there's discord in the symphony that's really disrupting the yeah. beauty of the music. And there's like trying to find a way to like, really get everyone on board to like talk yeah. and feel good about figuring out why there's this discord and eventually finding out that it's all basically around some other part that can't play or is unable to play. 
And so all these other musicians are trying to play two notes at the same time or something or other. And that when you get everybody on board and then eventually self comes, like the conductor comes and helps the part that can't play, play again. And then all of a sudden the, the beauty returns to the symphony, the harmony returns and all the rest. Does that well, metaphor, could you... Perfect that metaphor. metaphor. Yeah, and it is the conductor. Self is the conductor. It's in charge of the whole orchestra. And the part that can't play, can't play because it's carrying pain. Okay, it's carrying pain. And, you know, it needs to carry that pain because it's an important it's an important experience for the system. Okay, and and once the self really gets and understands the pain is with it, listens to it, hears it, feels it, the part doesn't have to carry it anymore because it's like, oh, self holds it. Self's the holder now. And so it can release the pain. So there is this release process that happens um, once there's this self to part relationship that occurs um, around the healing. But let me back up a little bit because this is an important and often um, sticky place for some people. And I want to get back to the trauma for a minute, okay? Because what ends up happening in trauma, okay, if you're on the playground and you're being bullied by a bunch of people, a bunch of kids, you're experiencing something painful. Okay. And depending on the level of the severity or the extreme nature of it, what ends up happening there is there's a chasm between the self and the parts. Okay. Self is there. Parts are there. And if you're getting yelled at and screamed at or hit or punched or whatever in this bullying situation, it's too much to handle. Trauma is overwhelming by definition. What ends up happening in the moment of trauma is that self leaves to protect our essence and parts are left carrying the bag. Hmm. So there ends up being this chasm between the self and the parts. Parts are left, getting yelled at and beat up or whatever. Self is protected. Our core, our essence is protected. But what ensues as a result of that is there's a chasm between the self and the parts. The parts don't like the self. You left me to get beat up. You left me to be yelled at and screamed. Now, we know that self is not malicious in intent at all. Self is preserving the essence of what's good in all of us. And self was the same age at the time of the trauma. Okay? But parts experience the self as abandoning them. Part of the healing in trauma is repairing that self to part relationship. And there's often a moment of apology and repair. I'm sorry. I was six years old too. I did the best I could. And there's a repair in the internal relationship, okay? So that's an important component to healing. It's not that the therapist is the good object that's going to give the part what it needed and wanted. It's that the therapist provides an environment to allow that repair of that relationship to happen. And that's part of the healing process, is repairing the chasm that occurred as a result of the trauma. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so then wh where's, where's the exiles in all of this? Wh where and who are they? The, they're the ones that carry the pain, you know? So there's somebody that got beat up in that bullying situation. And there's somebody that holds the, I'm no good. I'm unlovable. I'm going to die. I'm going to get, I, I, you know, the, the exiles carry the pain of the trauma. Okay, and they carry it in all different forms. It could be physically, you know, Bessel's book, The Body Keeps the Score, Bessel van der Kolk. It could be emotionally, like the overwhelm of that experience. Okay, it can be carried in any way. Um, you know, you're a worthless piece of crap. Okay, it holds that. I'm a worthless piece of crap. So it can hold the pain of the experience in, an, in all those different forms in a part. OK, and then what ensues is all the other parts that like, all right, I'm going to exercise like crazy so we don't feel this. OK, I'm going to eat a lot so we don't feel this. Oh, I'm going to drink. This is a good way to get away. 
you know, so all these other parts jump in to rescue and they do it in a way that they have access to. Like I have a great ex example of one of my clients who was struggling with drinking and she was shocked to learn that her drinking part was eight years old. You know, she's like, how could my drinking part be eight years old? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Eight-year-olds don't drink, right? But the part shared with her the story, like, um, yeah, you know, I remember um, when daddy came home from work, mommy and daddy used to have a cocktail in the foyer. And I saw when mommy and daddy drank, all the problems went away. So this eight-year-old part in the environment that it's in is like, oh, I know, drinking works. So these parts kind of take on these roles based on what they have around them, you know? Or another part will say, wow, yelling is so effective. That really stops things. I'll start yelling. That'll stop things. So parts take these extreme roles based on the environment they're in, but they do it in the service of protection to keep the pain away. <laughs> 